We're here with JP of Clutch and Sick Drummer Magazine. How's it going today, man? Great. And already? Glad to be here. Finally got some nice weather. Fantastic. Beautiful. What, uh, what or who inspired you to play drums in the beginning? Uh, probably, um, probably listening to Black Sabbath. Uh, in particular, uh, Paranoid Side 2. That, that was a record that was very influential in the way that I heard the drums. Um, and I was also around a lot of a lot of DC go-go music. So I grew up listening to stuff like Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers and Trouble Funk. And um, so, you know, in, in, in my high school, it was sort of a mix of like, uh, of uh, this go-go music going on and, uh, and a lot of metal and a lot of punk rock and hardcore too. I can definitely hear a lot of that completely too much. <clears throat> Very cool. What was your first kit? Uh, first kit was um, kind of a Frankenstein, uh, Gretsch, Ludwig, Viking drums they were also. Uh, so it was kind of a mismatch of different drums. Um, I immediately painted them blue, yeah. ruined them. Yeah, uh, I had the red bass drum, the black floor tom, the blue toms, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have that stuff though, you know? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what makes it. Who are a few of your favorite drummers? Uh, one of the first drummers that, that really uh, made an impression on me uh, was being able to see Elvin Jones when I was, uh, uh, 17 years old, and that was at Blues Alley in Washington, D.C. And at the time, I was taking drum uh, drum lessons um, from Don Schmidt, uh, who was a teacher back home, and uh, he he was really a, a great advocate of, of Elvin and the way that he played the drums and the way that he uh, uh, really changed the way people looked at drums. So he. Uh, Don got me to come out and see Elvin play, and, and to be honest, it was a little over my head the first time I saw it. It was, uh, uh, it, it was, it was not what I expected, and he was able to do things with time that were, for me, very confusing. Um, uh, looking back on it now, and having seen him play since then, uh, stuff that makes a little more sense, but he, he really uh, changed the way I, I looked at the instrument. Oh, yeah. Um, you guys at Clutch have been together, same members. For a long, long time, uh, is it uh, has it always been easy, or is it, how do you do it? I mean, uh... <laughs> it's definitely not always been easy. Uh, but you know, when when we started this band, the the idea was to play good shows and make good records. Uh, the 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 bands that we looked up to were bands like the Bad Brains and Prong uh, and Fugazi, um, and so so these were bands that that in our eyes were extremely important to what was going on musically, but they were also bands that were not on the radio and they weren't really filling arenas. Um, and and the, the four of us, <laughs> the, the four of us really related to stuff like that. So, so uh, you know, al although it was tough in the, in the early days, uh, when you have that focus, uh, when it's really about the music, then, then life is just easier. Yeah, yeah. you've uh, done uh, quite a few side projects. Uh, any plans for the future, or do you get the itch to do more? Than you sure, do? I, I, I'm, I'm always itching to do that kind of thing. It's important, I think, for uh, for us as musicians to really get out and play with other folks and, and see what other folks have to offer musically. Uh, we always learn something, you know, when we're when we're playing with somebody else. So, uh, the, any opportunity that I get to, to do something uh, outside of Clutch, I, I definitely enjoy the, that kind of work. Yeah. What uh, what is the uh, meaning behind the art? I don't um, Well, you know, Neil has a great deal to do with with the, the imagery of the band, and he always has. He's he's got a a, a very good uh, uh, mind for that for that kind of uh, stuff, uh, much better than I do, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> There's always so, like the one guy in the band that uh, right usually he he yeah he he's definitely uh, very much a part of what happens uh, artistically. So so he worked very closely with Nick Lachiotis, um, who's who's worked on a, on a lot of our previous albums. And, um, and really the concept was Neil's. Uh, the initial uh, uh, album cover was really a sketch that, that Neil put together one evening. Um, he's a better artist than he gives himself credit for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a tattoo artist and I tattooed the little dude on the uh, Blast Iron cover. Sure. I put that on some dude's arm before. <laughs> okay, he all right. He's like, I want the Blast Iron cover. Yeah, yeah. Super. Very cool. All right. Um, earlier you said uh, you have taken lessons. Have you ever given? Yes, I do. Uh, I, I, I enjoy giving lessons as much as I uh, enjoy taking lessons. You do that at home? Uh, I, mean, uh, I do that at home. home. I, I do that um, on a website called bandhappy.com. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to do when I'm out here on the road, so I haven't really done much of it lately. Uh, but when I'm at home and I have some weeks off, I'll do that. 
Um, and I have students come over to the house sometimes as well. Right. Very cool. Um, been like three years since the last record. Uh, how long did it take you to, to write the new parts and um, how long to track them? And, uh, uh, we, we spent uh, quite a bit more time this time around than we did on, uh, on uh, Strange Cousins from the West. Uh, we were very, very selective about the songs that we wanted to proceed with. Um, we edited ourselves, I think, more than we ever have on any other album. Uh, and we really tried to raise the bar. You know, we, we wanted to make a, a record that was uh, very focused from, from beginning to end. And so for us, that meant having a good flow of songs. Uh, a lot of the songs are, are a little bit more upbeat than we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, that's part of the challenge for us. We're always trying to find something new and, and try to make a new kind of an album. Hard to, hard to edit out, uh, I mean, to get to make everybody happy in the band, it's hard to sometimes get rid of things that you particularly like and um, maybe it doesn't fit or something. But, sure. You know, being a drummer myself, I know how difficult sometimes it can be. I'll do that longer and you're like, no, it doesn't. Right. <laughs> uh, sure enough. Right. What, uh, what song on Earth Rock do you like the most? Uh, well, you know, I, I know it's funny to say, you know, I enjoy playing them all, but I really do. They, they're, uh, uh, all the songs were played live uh, before we recorded them, so uh, that has a lot to do with, with the way the song ends up feeling. Right on the road, yeah. usually, uh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do. We write, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll write a little bit on the road, and, and more than anything, we really try the songs out on the road. We try to put them in the set immediately. Um, okay, so as soon as it's written, you get it's, it right in the... We, yeah, yeah. We, we throw it in there, because that, that's really important, especially as a drummer, you know, you, you really get to know the song when you play it live. You start to feel where the pulse is, uh, you start to hear the riffs a little differently and where you can push stuff and where you can pull, uh, and really, more than anything, where the vocal sits in the song, you know? And that uh, that becomes very apparent when you play it live, and then you get the, auction, the, the, re the, re the reaction from the audience, and that... That has a lot to do with how you uh -huh. uh, feel the song. Ever get any really major differences from what you play on the road with the new one than what happens in the studio? Uh, I, th I think arrangements change quite yeah, a bit, yeah. more, more than anything, really more than drum parts. Um, so that by the time we get to the studio, we have a very good idea of how the song flows. And, um, and the other part of it, too, is the fact that we work with Machine this time around. And he's a very different kind of a producer than we've worked with before. Uh, he requires you to be very prepared. Who's the producer on this one? Machine. Gotcha, gotcha, yes. Machine did uh, Blast Tower. Yep, and he's done some more, a lot of heavier stuff. Yeah, too, Metal right? God and, and uh, right, right. Other stuff too. That's, that's the mm -hmm. one uh, he brings to mind. Yeah. Um, kind of two questions here in this one. Um, about gear, you know, heads, cymbals, um, drums, and a lot, of the, a lot of the sounds on Earth Rocker, as a lot of the old, all of them, all your albums, have a real big boomy sound. Is there any uh, any um, special methods or any type of gear that you use to? Uh, well, in general, in general, I play uh, uh, larger bass drums. I'm, I'm playing uh, right now a, a Slingerland kit, an old Slingerland kit. Uh, so it's 14, 26, uh, 9, 13, 16, 16. Um, and these drums are wide open. I'm, I'm, uh, there's no uh, there's no dampening in there. Uh, coated uh, G2s on the top and uh, clear G1s on the bottom yeah, I and I really try to listen to what that shell wants to do where, where is that shell going to be most comfortable and I try to tune the drum to the shell so that there's it's a very uh, 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 responsive sound and, and a sound that allows you to get a lot of sound out of the drum whether you're playing uh, loudly or, or, or quiet. Very I definitely think the drum sounds you got on a lot of them because um, I'm more of a you know more of a thrash drummer and uh, you know the tighter you get the the, the I don't know I tune my snare way too high until that thing's gonna pop. Right. And uh, I always love hearing the different styles of of whatnot. Um, what bands you listen to and anyone's uh, you know what do you dig? What do you listen to a lot? Uh, well, we listen to a lot of music on the road and. Uh, it varies quite a bit. Uh, one of my favorite things to listen to is um, a streaming radio station uh, out of New Orleans, Louisiana, called WWOZ. Uh, the great thing about this station is it's a station that people actually, the DJs actually program their own shows. And so that means these guys bring their own records in and it's really refreshing. You're always going to hear something good. And a lot of it's New Orleans music, but a lot of it is uh, uh, experimental jazz or hip hop or uh, Caribbean, all, all kinds all of over the place, all huh? over the thing, yeah. yeah. So um, I've been listening to a lot of that, and um, I've been listening to a lot of a record 
by uh, a saxophonist called Joseph Latif. And uh, this is a record called Live at Peps. And it features James Black on drums, who uh, is, is a little new to me. I, I, I was uh, not really too familiar with the way he played until I, I got that record. And, and uh, it's an interesting listen. He was uh, a New Orleans drummer. Um, who really uh, had a very modern sound at the, at the same time and uh, it's interesting to listen to that. It's kind of like uh, finding a missing link, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's an exciting thing. So yeah, James Black. I will definitely check that out. Um, if you were to play another style of drumming, what do you think you'd lean towards? Uh, well, you know, I, 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 kind of, I kind of feel like, you know, as, as a drummer you should be able to play all different styles, so I, I really think about that. Um, one of my favorite things about being in clutch is that, you know, you, as, as players, we're allowed to do whatever we want. Uh, there are parts during the set when we improvise that are really just wide open. You can approach that part however Yeah, you, you guys are definitely not uh, not in one type of uh, box in anywhere at all. That's, I definitely love it. If, if you can, uh, you know, if, as a drummer, if you, can, if you can familiarize yourself with other styles, uh, it makes your vocabulary that much greater, and you'll be able to bring that much more to your own, uh, to your own band, to your instrument, and, and to whatever genre you play in. Oh, absolutely, man. Well, if you didn't drum, what career do you think you'd? Uh, what would you do if you were drumming? I think I think I might be a chef. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love to cook. I know that. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think the restaurant industry and rock and roll are, are probably similar. They have uh, uh, long, crazy hours <laughs> and, and no money and very little stability. Uh, but it's probably exciting and, and you know, being able to, to cook, I think that'd be, that'd be a fun thing. Cool. No doubt. Well, here's an off the wall one. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be in one? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speed. <laughs> you know, I wish I could know when I'm about to drop a drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate Certainly. it, man. Thank it's you. Been very talking much. with you. And uh, there you have it, motherfuckers. JP from Clutch. Thank you. Peace, bro. Alrighty. Awesome. That was easy. Yeah.